I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we dive into a powerful book. It is called The Road to Self-Worth, Marriage, and Relationships by Pastor Leo Boji. This transformative guide offers God's answers for building strong, healthy relationships filled with love, joy, and peace. We will explore practical wisdom for navigating the challenges of marriage and relationships as well. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight, and we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Pastor, great to see you here today on Spotlight. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. My pleasure. What inspired you to write The Road to Self-Worth, Marriage, and Relationships? Well, I served 25 years in the United States Navy, and one of the things that I saw as I moved up in rank was the number of men and women divorcing, you know, bad marriages from the start. Uh, and when I retired in 1992 and uh, started going to different churches, I saw the same thing. Now, the church doesn't have as many divorces, but it shouldn't have any. And I'm like, what is what's behind this? The main thing that I saw was people don't know how to keep their word. Hmm. When you give your vows in marriage, you're giving your word. And I think people don't connect that necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. So betrayal, is that the root of a lot of the uh, decline or dissolution of marriages? Well, the when the premarital counseling takes place, if they don't get them to give their word and understand what that means. And my premarital counseling, and we always do that, and I'll meet you maybe for an hour, hour and a half in premarital counseling. I don't do six months programs and things like that. I look to see if they love each other first and foremost. Because love conquers all. No matter what condition your marriage gets to, if you love each other, you will win in the end. But a lot of them don't understand it. So you hear things like, I married the wrong person. Mm. Well, my belief as a pastor, if you're a Christian and you both gave your word, you married the right person. Because the Holy Spirit will help you get through everything that attacks you. Yeah. I read uh, a while back, one of the biggest indicators for a marriage that cannot be saved is contempt. And if a uh, counselor such as yourself sees contemptuous, like con con contemptuousness, somebody rolling their eyes, for example, while the other speaks, that marriage uh, is headed probably for destruction, right? Ab absolutely. The problem that you have to address with that is what brought the contempt on? Because they did not get married while they were had contempt for each other. <laughs> exactly. What happened? And right. usually it's on the husband's side. I, uh, people always say, well, you always take the woman's side. No, I don't take either side. I counsel both of you according to what I see and in, in, as you talk to me as an individual. And so if you raised up and you're used to bad marriages in your family, then somewhere in there you think, well, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't work. No, you have to go into marriage recognizing this for life. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lifelong commitment, ideally, for sure. Yeah, and there are right. great ramifications if it doesn't work out. It is hard on the children, no matter oh, yeah. how peaceful you try to be. And often it's not. It, it's acrimonious, and the acrimony gets worse as time goes on. Absolutely. Um, what do you mean by self-worth marriage? Well, the, so self-worth is what you think of yourself. We get a lot of esteem from other people. Esteem is what people see you do. But what do you think about yourself? Uh, in the military, because I'm a Vietnam vet, you know, when you go off to war and you're dealing with people you just met, your lives are in each other's hands for, from uh, many different operations, it's like, who are you? Do you realize your importance in that situation? Well, what I saw a lot over there was guys on drugs, too drunk to fight. A lot of stuff. Not, don't get me wrong. That's a small percentage. Yeah. But you see those things. And so I saw the same thing in marriages and families. Is you, If you have issues, addictions, and many couples are getting married with these addictions, no, go get those handled first, then come back and let's do the marriage. But many pastors, many organizations, they do marriages like a, a some type of program, just come and pay me so much money and I'll marry you. That's, that's insane. And mm -hmm. so they start out on the wrong foot and quickly that thing turns to, uh, like you said, contempt. Yeah. Drugs, alcohol, all big factors in the breakdown of the marriage and the breakdown of each individual within that marriage. I mean, if you, 
are intoxicated, you're not making good decisions. You're not making godly decisions. You're not making Christian decisions. You're not yes. making healthy decisions, right? Absolutely. And and you need to recognize we're two people. I heard someone make this statement years ago. The duality of life is to play the opposites. And I'm like, what does that really mean, the duality of life? Well, there's a flesh side of me that always wants what it wants. It doesn't care. Your flesh doesn't even love you. And mm -hmm. I tell people, if you're a diabetic and one more slice of cake will kill you, your flesh wants the whole cake. If you're an alcoholic and one more drink will kill you, your flesh wants the whole fifth. And when you start understanding that, the spirit you is what should be running everything. And that's what I do in my premarital. I got to get you to see who you are in your spirit self. Those are the decisions that you make and you can keep your word with. But the bombardment of the flesh, the temptations that come against the flesh, they're not from God. They're mm -hmm. always from the devil. And so if you're used to that, as well as just the way I am, then don't get married. I, I will quickly tell a couple, you're not ready. And a lot of times they'll go to a just of a peace, see someone else. That's fine. But I will not be part of a marriage that's about to break up before you even start. I actually had a uh, marriage counselor one time on our show. And he said, by the time people get to me, it's too late. You know, mm -hmm. he feels that it's often, you know, the marriage is in disrepair, that couples really need to be proactive where they at first start some difficulties or spot some difficulties. That's when they should talk to someone like yourself before it gets so bad that, you know, the hurt is so bad, the contempt is so bad and so forth. Do you agree with that? To a certain degree. No, that's probably part of it. But, you know, I've had couples... Uh divorcing. Violence is the big thing. If there's been violence, you need to separate. Other than that, there's to me, there's no reason to separate. You don't get better separated, but if there's violence, and I've been teaching this for a long time, if your husband is abusing you, physically abusing you, call the police and put him in jail. That is, that is assault and battery. And people say, well, that's not very nice as a pastor to tell people to do that. But, you know, concrete authority wakes people up. Why mm -hmm. would you abuse someone you say that you love? Yeah. Why would you do that? Somewhere they picked up that that spirit. And and I was a drug and alcohol counselor. Uh, I taught anger management, all those things I did when I was a drunk at the time. I mean, I did a lot of, uh, years of abuse, 16 years of abuse, 16 years of uh, uh, coming out of Vietnam, Agent Orange injuries. I mean, all these things were part of my life. But how to overcome them? I got in the word of God. And I know people don't always want to hear that, but without the word of God, I would not have been the person I am today. And today we have seen tens of thousands in the last 20 years of our ministry, tens of thousands, and people tear up divorce papers. I mean, one weekend workshop, 12 hours, 16 hours, they tear up divorce papers. They find out they didn't know how to be married. When people find out how to be married, I'm telling you, they love it. They fall in love all over again. Wonderful. Wonderful. Tell us a little bit about the key principles from your book that can help couples strengthen their marriages. The main thing when you get married is the Bible says this, leave your mother and father. Now, it doesn't say disrespect your mother and father. If you allow your parents who the <clears throat> excuse me, are usually the closest to you to influence your marriage, you're going to have major problems. First of all, your love for your spouse is, is only at the level that you make it. No one else can love your spouse like you. So if you have a father that doesn't like the man his daughter is marrying, or a mother doesn't like the daughter your her son is marrying, you have major problems. And many marriages that I've seen, of, and I've done quite a few, they'll come in with mom well, doesn't really like him or dad really doesn't like him. You have to remove all those things. If you're going to give your word in the, in the marriage vows, then you need to be clear that you're going to stand on your word. That's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. No one's responsible to make you keep your word. That's your responsibility. Yeah. And your primary that's, that's role should be husband and wife, not son and daughter at that Absolutely. point. You know, you have to Absolutely. create your own unit, your own family unit. Yeah. I think that's yeah. invaluable advice because so many people, particularly in this era of delayed adolescence where people are kind of half living with their parents until they're, you know, yep. 59 years old. Absolutely. Um, they, they need to uh, realize that they need to get away from mom. They need to get away from dad. They need to start their lives together. Very, very important. Absolutely. What advice do you yeah. have for couples who are facing difficult times right now and considering divorce? 
Yeah. The main thing that I find is that when you get married as a Christian, I'm speaking only for Christians, you give your words, I call horizontally to each other first, and then God's Holy Spirit enters and you form what they call a triangle. And a three co a threefold cord, the Bible says, it's not easily broken. So the Holy Spirit enters to help you through these times. But if you don't know that and you're relying on yourself, how many people are even aware of, of the destruction they're doing in a marriage? It's, it's amazing what people will do and still be married. Mm. So when they recognize, okay, let me get back in the word. Let me go to church. I don't go to church. You know, well, he goes and she goes and the other one doesn't go. And, and so you're already battling each other. And I see a lot of that, but I'm, I'm telling you, Logan, when they get back together and start recognizing, go to church. Yeah. Uh, I can't explain the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's there. It's there to help you. Don't run from it, run to it. And that's what I've seen many. And when I say people tear up divorce papers, I've ministered in Kiev, Ukraine, and uh, three, four different cities in Australia, Auckland, New Zealand. You know, I tell people the devil's the same no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. And so is God. He can help you through anything that you are willing to go to do, but he won't make you do anything. Great advice across the board. The name of the book is The Road to Self-Worth, Marriage and Relationships. It's written by a wonderful author, a man who has lived a life, who has got a lot of life experience and a lot of practical experience in this field, Pastor Leo Boji. It is a transformative guide that offers God's answers for building strong, healthy, happy relationships that are filled with love, joy, and peace, and that are Christ-centered as well. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your time. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.